Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So a bit of a bonus video for you today, guys. Uh, yeah, today I'm actually releasing three videos because, uh, and this is just going to be a short one. I wanted to bring this to your attention. I couldn't really find a place to uh, to put this in uh, in the other videos from today, but I wanted to bring you this from Good Morning Crypto, a must read. Did Ripple XRP launch before Bitcoin? So uh, I don't know if you guys saw this, uh, this documentary that just came out uh, yesterday. Money Electric, the Bitcoin mystery. Uh, basically, the filmmaker goes through and, uh, you know, quietly discovers through his interviews that uh, he may have actually found the creator of Bitcoin. And he actually traces back some interesting uh, posts from Satoshi Nakamoto from back in the day and similarities in what, uh, well, one of the people he interviewed, uh, some similarities with regards to the writing style and, uh, well, some other things too. Anyway, if you guys are interested, it is quite a good uh, documentary, I thought. I know there's a lot of uh, people that probably didn't like this particular documentary, but I thought it was pretty good. Um, I guess all this to say that, you know, Bitcoin has an illustrious history, but Ripple, guys, its concept was originated in 2004, and at that time it was called Ripple Pay, founded by Ryan Fugger. So I don't know how many of you guys knew that. Ripple Pay was a decentralized platform aimed at providing secure and instant global transactions, but it was not a cryptocurrency, at least not at that time. In 2012, Chris Larson and Jed McCaleb took over the project, rebranding it as OpenCoin and introducing the Ripple Protocol and XRP cryptocurrency. So at this point, this is when uh, XRP was initially introduced to the masses, <laughs> to the masses being a small minority of people, but you get what I'm saying here. OpenCoin focused on developing a decentralized system for cross-border payments and became the foundation of what is now Ripple Labs. The XRP ledger and the cryptocurrency XRP were created at this time, making Ripple's digital currency aspect younger than Bitcoin. So that is an interesting point to note here because, you know, we always consider Bitcoin as that king crypto. It is the one with the most popularity. Uh, you know, there has been speculation that Bitcoin was created by government and I've done videos on that in the past. Um, but guys, the one thing I do want to point out is that this protocol, this, uh, this idea of electric money or moving money through a distributed ledger technology has been a concept for a very long time. And yes, it does veer away from the classic, uh, you know, idea of Bitcoin. But it is important to note this. And, um, you know, there, there have been more things that have arisen over the years that have just got me wondering, that have got me thinking, hmm, you know, things that make you go, hmm. So I wanted to bring this up. First, I wanted to, uh, well, thank Echo to Truth for bringing this up. I hope to see banks using Ripple. This was an old video call from 2006 from a podcast, okay, May 24th, 2006, featuring the creator of Ripple. Uh, Ryan Fugger, one of Ripple's co-founders. It's amazing to hear his vision for evolving money back then and see how far Ripple has come today. Now, it's funny because, uh, you know, if you remember back to 2006, you remember video calls were not as clear, were not as good as they are today. So the, the audio quality on this is not that, not that great, but you can still make out what he says. Listen to this. It'll take a while, but I, I like to analogize to email. For one, you know, the internet took a long time to the fact that the money is what we say it is. Money is just a way of keeping score. There are more efficient ways and more humane ways, let's say, of keeping score. So it'll take a while, but I, I like to analogize to email. For one, you know, the internet took a long time to grow and people took a long time to catch on and start using email <laughs> instead of writing letters, you know, and there's still people that write letters, but, you know, over the last, you know, 20 years, a lot of people have adopted email uh, as a, the, um, the primary ma means of written communication. We're kind of in the middle of the same thing with voice. I mean, I'm talking to you over Skype right now, but most people don't even know what Skype is, and uh, they continue to use the regular phone even though they pay $50 a month to do it. It's going to be slow, but it's, I think it's inevitable that newer, more efficient, more open systems will slowly take over, and in, in my lifetime, I hope to see, I hope to see banks using Ripple. He says, I hope to see banks using Ripple. Now that is interesting considering this is back from 2006, only two years after he created Ripple. Now, of course, uh, you know, if we just go back to that first tweet, we know about the history. 2012 is when uh, that dream came true for him six years later when Chris Larson and Jed McCaleb took over the project. Now, you know, I've done videos too on Chris Larson and Jed McCaleb's history. So that is uh, also interesting. If you guys uh, want to look that up, uh, Chris Larson started with uh, some other companies and then, uh, you know, eventually he became part of the WEF. Things that make you go, hmm. If you guys want to check out one of those videos from a few years ago, I'll link one up here in the top right hand corner. 
So on top of that, I also wanted to bring you this. Fast forward to 2013. And here's what Arthur Brito said about XRP. Okay, Jungle Link did post this. Arthur Brito, XRP is the hidden plumbing. I expect the majority of people who use Ripple Payment Network to be able to ignore XRP. The value of XRP is probably less important than the spread. So that's interesting. Uh, using stable coins like RLUSD adheres to the original vision of the XRP ledger. So basically leveraging XRP, having it be the plumbing in this system of value. Uh, down here it says the value of XRP is probably less important than the spread. So, you know, when we're trading XRP on an exchange, you want to, you don't want the spread to be that uh, that high. And the, and, the, and the smaller the spread, the more liquid the cryptocurrency is. So in other words, he's basically saying we need XRP to be liquid so that the spread, so that the spread is not that large. But guys, in the same breath, we've also heard David Schwartz say that XRP has to be a high enough price to uh, to target some of those high value payments. So guys, that really just brings me back to this video I did from 2020 when Brad Garlinghouse says basically we're the plumbers, essentially exactly what Arthur Brito was saying and David Schwartz giving a description of how XRP is going to be used. And guys, Anders Lundberg here on Twitter. In a way, we're plumbers, says Brad Garlinghouse. You don't call the plumber until the pipes break. And it's looking like that is exactly what's happening now. The pipes are breaking. The system is collapsing. Brad Garlinghouse even realizes that this is a very, very good opportunity for Ripple. And if anything was going to fast track cryptocurrency regulation, I, I don't think that I would put my money on anything other than this unprecedented financial collapse. Guys, this from real XRP boy on Twitter at boy underscore XRP, friendly reminder from Joel Katz. And we gotta remember this, this is almost from a year ago now. And this is when people were still doubting XRP, but let's take what he was saying then and apply it to the circumstances today, okay? David Schwartz says, we can't guarantee what other people will do. They will use XRP if it works better and they won't if it doesn't. We are not trying to trick or coerce people into using XRP, even where it isn't the best choice. The case for XRP comes down to the following. One, payment systems work best with bridge assets to focus liquidity. Two, there are good reasons to expect a cryptocurrency to be the most popular bridge asset. And three, there are good reasons to expect that cryptocurrency to be XRP. Short reasons for those things, number one, Open decentralized payments will have lots and lots of assets, including national currencies of all kinds and cryptos. A significant fraction of payments will be among assets that aren't the most popular. Using intermediary assets to settle those payments concentrates liquidity and reduces spreads. Number two, national currencies are always tied to jurisdictions and can't be universal. Systems built around them will never be as open and inclusive as systems that aren't. And three, XRP settles faster than any other major crypto. It has higher transaction rates than most major cryptos. It is beat by others only by the amount of liquidity available today. And this was, again, written about a year ago now. At the end of the day, what we could in fact see, and uh, you know, this hypothesis has uh, come forth, discussed by people like Mr. BXRP, who did meet David Schwartz at a swell event, I believe it was back in 2019, when he did say, David basically did say, the price of XRP can't just gradually go up like this, okay? What it has to do is it has to basically go up really fast and then stabilize. And so if that is the case, if XRP did go up and stabilize, and uh, I just randomly picked a point here, but if it was, I don't know, 46, $47 per coin, but then really kept that peg there and really didn't move too much so that the spread was very minimal, well, then that would make sense, right? In terms of what Arthur Brito is saying here, uh, the spread is what's more important than the value of XRP. However, the value is important if you do want to target large payments payments. And if you do want to target large payments as, uh, you know, was Ryan Fugger's hopes, well, then the price of XRP does have to be high for that to happen. So I just kind of wanted to bring you guys a little bit of this history today. Again, a shorter video that I thought would be interesting to share, but that's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.